Mike McGiffin, um, Mike Wood, uh, the mayor and I would like to have one of those or a couple of those bottles with beer in them uh, for the run. So, no yep, special order. Um, Justin, very nice. Uh, good to hear that update on, on the city schools. Um, so, I want to take advantage of being able to introduce the mayor for his uh, state of the city address. Uh, because of the partnership that we've been able to create with the city, I think is unprecedented in, in, in terms of our relationship. When you look around the country and identify places where local economies are thriving, you see robust partnerships between public, private, and phil philanthropic sectors. And the city of Youngstown economy is on a steep ascent because we have formed that kind of partnership here. Our economic team at the regional chamber received great cooperation from the Mayor Brown administration and Jobs Ohio to produce the incentives necessary for Stillite International to become the first company in more than 60 years to relocate its corporate headquarters to Youngstown. Our team and the city's economic development department worked closely together with, so that Trivium can substantially grow its manufacturing operation in the city as you heard uh, a few moments ago. And in conjunction with the Chamber and the Brown Administration, Penguin City Beer has successfully repurposed an abandoned factory and continues to grow. This partnership between the Chamber and the City doesn't just react when opportunities like those arise. We have taken proactive steps to seize unprecedented opportunities that we know are coming. The Chamber, the City, and the Philanthropic Regional Chamber Foundation have embarked on an equity-based site readiness program to create the commercial and industrial sites necessary for economic growth. The entire state of, the, of Ohio has few marketable sites meeting company needs. Even fewer communities are proactively engaging in creating sites because the time it takes to create a site extends beyond the political cycle. This administration sees beyond the political cycle. That's why, through our site readiness program, Youngstown will be positioned for the $2.4 billion All Ohio Future Fund, which is designed to enhance the sites that our program identifies. That's why the city will be positioned well to receive its piece of the $1.2 trillion Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, the $370 billion Inflation Reduction Act, and the $53 billion CHIPS Act, all told more than $1.6 trillion about to be injected into the national economy in the next few months. The Chamber and the City Administration have also recently forged an advocacy partnership to make sure Youngstown's voice is heard in Columbus and Washington. This proactive approach is already producing opportunities. The Chamber uh, and the City are positioned well um, an, an, an additive manufacturing innovation hub anchored by America Makes in downtown Youngstown is a perfect fit for the governor's proposed $150 million appropriation to create these hubs of innovation around Ohio. Not only have we successfully advocated that the three C's, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati, not be eligible for this funding, we successfully solicited the three C's to support that concept and to support that all of that money be distributed in Dayton, Toledo, Canton, Akron, and Youngstown. Data tells us that Northeast Ohio will soon outperform comparable regions in gross regional product, employment, per capita income, and labor force participation. Economic development trends show us that Ohio is on everybody's radar as companies look to reshore and onshore operations and fortify supply chain recovery. With this kind of partnership, the city of Youngstown will soon be on everybody's radar. So with that, I welcome the Honorable Mayor Tito Brown. Just that I can do that too. I don't know if you ever, yeah, there you go, right there, right? <laughs> Good morning, Youngstown. I, I, I am always happy to be 
uh, here with the chamber and my friends from the chamber. Um, but it, as I get older, I don't know about you, but I, I kind of got to adjust things. Like when I get in my car, I got to get my seat belt together. Let me pick my pen up. <laughs> get my glasses out. And, and everybody know you, you got to get your good music on first. You got to make sure you got your driving music. Now, is it just me when I back up, I have to turn the music down and make sure I can pay attention to what's, what's there for me? But I, I really want to just take a little uh, pause this morning and talk about Youngstown. I've been working for six years, and, and I've not had a Groundhog Day as the mayor of the city of Youngstown. No day's the same, no hours the same, no minutes the same. And I go to work every day trying to get better than the day before. And, and can I tell you guys, we're moving in the right direction. Whether it's two inches or three inches, we're moving in the right direction. Now, Josh, I just want to let you know, man, I might not be able to judge the parade next year because I'm getting calls all over the nation to judge their parades. So I'm just saying, you, you put me on the map. You, you really got me right where I needed to be. And for all the men in the room, I want you to give it up for all the women in the room. We want to celebrate women for National Women's Month right now. And I have the first lady with me. Uh, she's in the room today with me, but I also have, I'm like Sister Sledge. I got all of my sisters with me. All the ladies, all the ladies from City Hall, if you would stand and give them a big round of applause because this is how I do my job and get things done. So my friends at Trivium, last year we made a challenge. We talked about bringing people on and working together, but I gotta let you know, you probably should slow down on that cheese whiz and the can for dogs. My, my dog's a little older and things haven't, didn't work quite well for him when he had the cheese whiz out of the can. I'm still paying for that vet bill. Paul, uh, the Ch Taj Children Hospital, we wanna continue to make sure that you help the next generation, but I heard you heard, say 98 yards. I got excited. I'm thinking we're going to play some football, but I can't run 98 yards anymore, Paul. I can see you in the corner over there. But thank you for what you're doing. Mike McGiffin, April 19th, I just canceled my reservations because you said storm the Capitol. I'm not doing that, just to let you know. Pick better words, Mike. Things are a little, <laughs> a little too soon, Mike. A little too soon for that, just to let you know. A little too soon. One person seeking glory doesn't accomplish much. S success is the result of people pulling together to meet common goals. And over the last six years, we've been working to build those relationships in the city of Youngstown and focused on how do we become a force factor, not at, just at the local, the regional, the state, and the federal level. From the city side of the world, we've become, we started focusing on the health and the well-being of our citizens. It's easy to talk about brick and mortar, but what about the people who are in your community and how you're taking care of them? It's not just the physical health, but it's the mental health. And one of the things that we really became more involved in most recently is to talk about the mental health. We talk about mental health as if it's not gonna affect any of us. And more and more we're finding out it's impacting our community. In order to get better as a team, we must ensure that everyone is in the right place, in the right position, helping those who need the service in this community. I remember my coach telling me in high school, just before practice one day, he gave us, he said, linemen down there, running backs go there. I went with the running backs. He said, Brown, where are you going? I said, I think I want to be a running back. He said, son, you might be fast, but you're not a running back. He said, you're only fast when it comes to running with the guards and the linemen, but when it comes to running backs, you are as slow as a grocery truck. <laughs> and I, it made a little sense to me then, it was, it was hard to hear, Jeff, that I was not a running back, but I was, out of the, I was out of my position. And I think we're finding a lot of those who are doing social service right now in this community do well, but they veered off from their uh, original message and the work that they wanted to do. And unfortunate, it's unfortunate many of them are doing it because funding says go here and they're going there. Their original mission, they were just focused on one thing and they were good at. But in order to keep the lights on, 
the gas on and keep people working. They had to veer off from their original mission. As mayor, I want to make sure those families who are facing suicide, overdose, gun violence, homelessness, are receiving the proper service that's given to them. So this year, along with my staff, we've been working with it, Beverly and Nikki, we've been talking about, we want to put together a social service navigator, someone who can make sure that where, where, where people need to go. I just saw on a radio show this morning, and a lady said, someone's a veteran, they're homeless, where can they go? Is there any help? My first question should have said, yes, there's help, and call this person. And we're missing some of that because some people might check one box or two box, but they don't check all the boxes. It's, it's a shame for us to have a family who loses their home in a fire. The, the male in the home is not married to the female in the home. They can't go into the homeless shelter. He's a veteran. The kid has health issues and they're homeless. That bothers me as a mayor in the city of Youngstown. And the buzzword across the nation, we know that affordable quality housing is an issue. But we've got to make sure that individuals, when they want to come in to do business in the city of Youngstown, that they have to put some skin in the game when it comes to housing. I found out, finding out that those that come in, they have a deal. And we get them all the time. I have a deal for housing. $10 million project. They say, I got a gap. I had an $8 million gap. <laughs> I, I don't, Justin, I, I've been school. I, I, I'm kind of missing the math. $10 million project, I got an $8 million gap. And oh, by the way, we want to get $2 million in tax credits. That deal is not going to happen. If you want to do business in the city of Youngstown as a developer, we will help you. But you've got to come in and put some skin in the game. Housing is a key issue. Quality housing is a bigger issue. And we will work with you in the community. But you have to come in with some skin in the game. Don't even stop by my office if you don't have any skin in the game. Please keep going. Now this one, I, I thought about, we talk about workforce. And we're, you, you heard us talk earlier about the hub that we're working on. And where's my friend Ryan? I asked my friend Ryan. Ryan's in the back. He's working on his capstone project. And Ryan says, I want to help people in workforce development. Now, if I ask each one of you to give me your definition of workforce development, probably many of you are going to have a different answer. And what I want us to do as a team to start realizing what's that really mean. And it, for me, it means that individuals are job ready, job trained, and they have access to the upcoming and industries that are there. We need to make sure, as you heard earlier, when we start talking about this innovation hub, I want my grandchildren, my children's children to be ready for the technologies that's gonna be there. But as we continue to work on this workforce development and the workforce uh, training that Guy was talking about, it's all about team building. It's about the mayors saying, here's my job, here's my role. The chamber saying, here's my role. And we all have one voice and one ask with our legislators. And we're, we're competing for just one big pie. And when we get it back to the table, we'll slice it up together and figure out what, what workforce looks like. Now this right here, doing business in the city of Youngstown is a hot topic. And I want to take this time right now to take, thank Nikki Posterly, Beverly Hose, and her whole team. Yesterday, we had our first inaugural business summit in the city of Youngstown. Give them a big round of applause. This was the focus of the one, two, three of what, what to do in the city of Youngstown if you want to do business. We're finding that many individuals will, will buy a building and then they'll come to the city and say, can you help me figure out what to do with it? What's the incentives? What kind of grants? We want individuals to say, before they buy the building, before they get into that deal, they need to know the ins and outs of what will happen. Or you buy a building from the city of Youngstown and then you turn around and say, you have any, any, any ARPA funds? No, all the ARPA funds are gone. But we want to make sure that individuals, when they come in, Nick, that they know here's the incentive packet, here's how I'm going to program that building, and here's what it looks like. If you want to do business in the city of Youngstown, you don't have to pay me, 
you don't have to owe me, you don't have to take me out to dinner or get a good cigar. If you want to benefit the citizens of Youngstown, get the permits, get the zoning change, or get whatever you need to do business in the city of Youngstown. That's all I ask. And I think yesterday set the parameters for individuals who want to do business in the city of Youngstown. Now, if you haven't heard, there's a crisis across the nation about EMT and ambulance services, and we have, we're not in any exception. But we're continuing to work uh, with city council and with a couple of opportunities now we're gonna put in to do a feasibility study to see what's that really look like for the city of Youngstown. Is it, is it the city running it? Is it supplementing the ambulance service? And someone said something crazy the other day, so I believe that sometimes you have to ask some bold and bodacious ideas. Someone said, what about there's a cooperate, a co-op co in this region for our own ambulance service? I said, what a great idea. Something we should think about. Our American Rescue Plan dollars, uh, I didn't come to give anybody a check if you thought I was coming to write you a check and give you a letter of yes, that's not gonna happen. But I wanna tell you what really happened as we've been going over the last 12 months over our committee. You know what we found? The individuals were not talking to one another. We had organiza organizations asking for funding from the city of Youngstown, but they to do services that we had another organization said, I provide that service. At the end of the day, they weren't talking. They weren't working together. And through our process, now they're partnering together because they had to. If they wanted to get the funding on one side and the service delivery on the other, we, we merged and meshed them together. Sometime in leadership, you've got to step there and say, you know what, you've got to put your differences aside and you've got to really provide an opportunity for one another. And they realized that they both could help one another and help the bottom line. So we're gonna to continue to focus on that uh, with our ARPA funds, but we are so proud that many of those organizations are working together now. Now, here's the piece that I, I, I love more than anything. President Barack Obama said it best, we are the people we've been waiting for. We've been talking about, well, who's gonna spark, who's gonna spark the development in our neighborhood? Who's gonna, who's gonna spark the housing development? Who's gonna make sure reinvestment happens in our neighborhood? We are the people that we've been waiting for. So we've started focusing on a joint police and fire campus, and during that, we wanna put it right into a neighborhood where we wanna start development that's happening. We recently interviewed two, three Harvard fellows for a two-year program where we can get Harvard fellows to come in and look at the Crab Creek Corridor to develop that community that we've been talking about. Now I wanna give you this, this, this update. Last year we talked about being accredited in our health department, and now we have community health workers in our neighborhoods under the leadership of Aaron Bishop, and we are an accredited health department throughout the state of Ohio. Give them a big round of applause. Now, City Hall is no different than anyone else. I just wanted to give you a little update as we, as we look at what's happening across the nation and the safety. We've taken through all of our, our staff through Alice Active Shooter Training, and we've provided AEDs on all floors in City Hall because we truly believe that we have to protect our location and our place of business as well as anywhere else. And if anybody hasn't read the newspaper and Skolnick hasn't written about it, four or five times, maybe six times in one week. We've installed traffic enforcement speed cameras in our school zones. And I say that in, in, in real funniness, but in, in all honesty, our babies need what any other community needs. They need to be safe going and coming from their schools. And if I give you anything that's free, this is free advice for everybody. You won't have to pay for this. I won't bill you for this. Slow down. Our babies deserve to be safe going to school. So if you get a ticket, slow down. If you get two tickets, slow down. If you get three, you need, to, you need to come see me because I need to look at your driver's license. You're just disobeying the law and my babies need your help. In the movie, Remember the Titans, Herman Boone played the Denzel Washington. 
had to build a team with different diversity, ethnicities, and culture. And he let them know that the only way to win, they had to do three things. Put their differences aside, understand they all have different roles to play, and they must work with people that don't look like them. So in my closing remarks, the key to a successful team is not liking one another, but respecting each other. We must ensure to become a better team, Youngstown, so that we can compete at the local, the regional, state, and the federal level. Thanks for having me, and let's go team and work together.